today? It's one o'clock and time for lunch. <laughs> dum de dum de dum. That's now relevant, obviously. <clears throat> Should we start? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hello and welcome to In the Court of the Wenton King. What are we reviewing? Mr. Mr. Bugle, Mr. Bungle, uh, California IA. Yeah, California IA. Sounds like a real hot chili peppers album. It does, doesn't it? Isn't that strange? Yeah. So, yeah, uh, the lesson to be learned, which we, I already knew because I'd heard it somewhere else. Expectation is a prison. <laughs> because it's a big change again. It's different. It's just different again. Different band, basically, doing different stuff. Uh, you know, it starts with a like a lounge kind of song. Not not a surreal lounge kind of song with a surprise. Just just a lounge kind of song. Um, tricked again. <laughs> you know, still on Warner Brothers. People buying this must have thought, you know, because they liked uh, Disco Volante. Oh, I like them. I'll buy this as well. And, and again, they're saying, no, no, you don't like us. No, we're different. <laughs> it's brilliant. Still many, many styles covered. But there's something in there, actually, which I spotted, and actually... I, I read up on it and it turns out the band said the same thing. They said it's poppy. And it is poppy. Not in a bubblegum sense, but it made me think of bands like the Blue Tones and made me think of bands like... What's that band we did? Wigfield? Not, not Wigfield. It's not like Wigfield. That band we did? Elbow? It, yeah, like Elbow. and that, it, There's an element of that in there. There's still massive changes and it's still hugely complicated and, and all that stuff is still there, so it's not quite like that. But there's a certain element of that in there of, of, of pop in a good way, which is interesting. And that wasn't there at all before, obviously. And, but the, and the catchy song at the start, and you think, what, what, what the hell are they doing? And by the end, it's really good. It's a good song, you know. It isn't all like that, but it's definitely more commercial. You know, the second song starts, and it's kind of this sort of messed up horror, hammer horror organ with the rockabilly guitar. But it's kind of the same chord progression as before, so that, that, that's kind of cool. The, there's a move, there's folky stuff on there. I don't think there was folky stuff on there before. It's not avant-garde. The second album is Avant Garde, this isn't. Um, but you can still tell it's them, I think. Rockabilly surf guitar is actually the one of the, the, the consistent things in there. The singing, because they're songs, um, it's still very complicated. There is a disappointment. I mean, just like the last one, there is a disappointment. But I think it's more of a disappointment in that you know there isn't anything crazy enough. And it's a good album, but and you enjoy it, and you think, yeah, that's good. But maybe we need to hear this first. You know, in the, I don't think... It, it's no way it's going to have the re-listen value of, of the first two. No way. Not a chance. So that is a disappointment. There's only three. And that's it. Finished. Sorry. Yeah, my turn. Okay, so basically on board now. This is a three-egg album. And I've not got much more to actually in there. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I am bored, though. I did, I did find myself, you know, listening to this. Getting, okay, I'm going to get into this. And then actually putting other stuff on. Mm. and uh, spending my music listening time in, in other areas which is normally a sign that actually it's not holding my attention mm. and it's because probably the avant-garde of the second one was quite you know out there oh that's interesting mm. and they're just the first one was so bombastic and fantastic uh, yeah. this just is a bit yeah it isn't it's, bad it's a, at all uh, it's, it's just really, a bit it's good it's smudgy isn't it it's, it just feels a little bit yeah, a bit like that. because it's the third one, and we, the expectation is there, and you can't you can't help yeah. that. This is now the third one. I think this is ultimately the danger of Mr. Bungle. Yeah, we, you know, I think we could have, we saw this coming from the first album. Yeah, that this is the only way it could it could possibly go. And yeah, then, yeah, bored of it. Yeah, I'm not sure why they because they they um they split up. Their last performance in Nottingham, wasn't it? Mm. In the UK. Yeah, I'm not sure why it was. Um, yeah, but I, I can only imagine it's like well, what we're we gonna do now. I think that was an element of it. I mean, there's this thing about this feud with Anthony Kiedis. Is that, I don't know how to pronounce his name from from for Chili Peppers. This goes back many years, and, and supposedly Anthony Kiedis thought uh, he'd nicked his vocal style. And there are similarities in the vocal style. Certainly when they were younger. The difference is Mike Patton's a much better singer, <laughs> actually. Particularly if you listen to live, the huge difference now. And Anthony Kiedis is having to kind of he's doing the old rock singer having to sing a different way thing. And Mike Patton is still. Rah! It's still brilliant, you know, it's deeper, and it's kind of, you know... But the, the response to this, this accusation early on was to play loads of Chili Peppers songs, which is funny, you know, yeah. and that's part of their humour, and, and he probably took that the wrong way as a piss take, you know. But this album was postponed because it was due to come out the same day as California Cation. That's not a coincidence, <laughs> that's obviously a wind-up. What are they calling their album? OK, we'll call ours California. <laughs> 
Southampton for the Soviet round on the same day. Obviously a wind-up, must be, you know. And then what happened after that, at the tour for this, that they were, Mr Bunga were rising, you know, and they were booked on these big festivals. And the Chili Peppers, of course, were headlining at this point. They were the, their absolute commercial peak. So Anthony Keady said, oh, well, we're not going to play it unless you take Mr Bunga off the, off, the, off the bill. So that must have hit them. They thought, well, there's, if there's this guy who's going to screw us over, there's nothing they can do. And if, if they've got to hear musically, unless they can have a move upwards, it, they must have felt it, was, it isn't worth doing. Although I hear there was some sort of falling out. It sounds like there was one individual who ruined it for everyone, typically, that kind of thing. I don't, wasn't sure who it was. But I think that's par for the course for a band who've they've reached, they've done it. There's nothing else for them to do. And, I, and, and, and the long gaps between albums kind of helped. You know, why would we want to do this again? Screw you. I'm not doing this. You know, that, that's, that's how I've read it anyway. Maybe people have got more information, I don't know. Yeah, I agree. I still think if we weren't talk, if, if we hadn't had the other two albums, we'd be talking about how interesting and great this is. There's some really cool stuff on here. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be there in the context of those three albums. There's nothing you can do about that. Uh, because of the, the um, you know, how over the, over the top the music is, you think of this and you think, mm. and there is some crazy stuff on there. Yeah, it's there in, it's there yeah. in spot, spits and spots, and it almost teases you. You think, oh, yeah, here, we here, we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. And then. Doo, 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 doo. Which is quite funny, actually. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, yeah, but trolled it's, again. Yeah, but it's not. It's not funny enough. Yeah, and the only way after doing Disco Volante, the only way to alienate your fans again <laughs> is, to, is to go that way. There's, you can't go more weird. I think, yeah, more weird. You know, if they like weird, let's not let's not be weird then. Let's be normal. <laughs> you know, it does bits of it remind me of the eighties Zappa rock albums, not the weird albums, the rock albums. But some of the harmonies might be thinking of ELO, actually. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if they'd been listening to ELO. Particularly because at that point ELO were very unfashionable. It would be exactly the kind of thing that they'd want to go and listen to. Just like Frank Zappa played Stairway to Heaven in 1988 when he was the peak of being a joke song kind of thing. But, you know, there's some sort of, I think, North African, is it Central Asian music, is it Arabic music, East European folk as well, or is it Yiddish, or what, I don't know. Uh, there's still some metal in there, not as much. Lots of Dick Dale, basically, you know, and rockabilly guitar and all that, and I, I, I enjoy all that, you know. And, but that was always there. That's the kind of the one thing that was always there. I think I think the quote was, they call it poppy, but some no some, some no doubt fan isn't going to agree, you know. To a no doubt fan, this is mental. <laughs> so it's all relative, isn't it? You know? Yeah. It recorded on analog tape. Uh, I wonder that the, I mentioned this last week that there's a problem with it sounding too electronic. It doesn't sound like a performance. It sounds like a, an edit, and I think it was a performance. It was just very tight, and maybe doing analog analog tape makes it softer and yeah, more realistic. That's, it? that's what it actually. It, it still doesn't feel like a performance. It just mm. feels very soft and very yeah. And, oh, and for the first time of its time, that's how yeah. mm, for lots of albums felt at that time. Yeah, but you look at the other music that was coming out around about then. Yeah, and it's, we're still you know the, at the end of the peak of the industry of, of Nickelback and that stuff. <laughs> You know, boring, boring, and and th there was the feeling that that's it now. That's what rock music's going to sound like forever. And, uh, and you know, that, 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 was, that was pushed by the grunge movement. Of, oh, it's different now. Um, but I believed it. Everyone believed it. When Dream Theater came out with Falling Into Infinity, it's like, oh, well, they're going to sound like that now. Of course, they have to, and then that's it. That's it. <laughs> of course, it wasn't true, but that's how it felt. And I don't. I mean, I, I didn't predict the fall of the industry. I suppose that's, that's what it is. And a four-year break between albums. It must have been infuriating for fans. We're going to have another album of this, yeah! Huh? Wow, well, that's, that's the issue. I mean, the, the fans that follow, uh, you know, they're into Mr Bungle, they're not going to be hardcore fans who want an album every year. Mm. Because it's it's too interesting for that. Yeah. You need it's to a, if... Yeah, it's a sort of... Okay, that's interesting. You don't... I, I don't think you invest in it like you would... like. The Faith No More fans invest in Faith No More, the yeah. Chili Peppers invest in Chili Peppers, who, yeah. you know, they're the best band they ever. Believe them to be gods, yeah. please, the greatest bass player of all time. Yeah, I, I would, I would imagine Mr. Bungle fans are professional appreciators. Yeah, they're more like proggy people. Yeah, they probably wouldn't call it that. So, I mean, I, I don't know if the four-year wait would be infuriating. It'd just be I mean, a so, sign of how good the music is, I suppose. So, who likes it? I mean, if it, every album makes you go, huh? <laughs> it's the people who like going, huh? I suppose. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, you would imagine what's his face is like. Huh? What's his name? Guy's dead now. He's dead and yet still alive, Leonard Cohen. No, not him. Oh. The radio guy who knows all music ever was really into Oh, John Peel. John Peel, yeah. He must have. Yeah, he, you know, Although, he'd be really into this, wouldn't he? The thing about John Peel was he only liked people when they weren't famous, so I bet he played the first album to death yeah. and then didn't like them then. Because <laughs> he was successful. That's what he did with Because, I mean, John Peel helped the very early careers of all these bands we like. All of them. You know, there's all of them who've got BBC sessions and it's John Peel. And then suddenly he hates them. <laughs> you know, it's really strange. Even, I mean, The Nice. John Peel, believe it or not, loved The Nice. Oh, I know, yeah, yeah. I'll and the first concert by ELP, Waste of Talent and Electricity. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference? Okay, I, I mean, yeah, okay, The Nice are a slightly different thing, and, you know, but still, it's ridiculous. Is it a move to commercialism? Or is it, let's troll the fans again because we're Mr Bungle and we do random stuff? I think it's a, a, I don't think it's a move to commercialism. They, they, they show no... Apart from being on the Warner Brothers label, <laughs> they show no interest in being commercial at all. Yeah, or having a fan base. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're kind of anti-commercial. Yeah, yeah, literally. And even though they're, they're high profile in a sense. Yeah, I, I, I was going. I thought we'll do a bit on other bands that are taking such complete U-turns with each album. I couldn't think of any people. Thought, oh well, Genesis changed, didn't they? When Phil Collins took over, <laughs> of course, isn't true. It's like five albums worth to get there, or seven or something, until they really get there. Bands change slowly over time. Yes, as well. Yeah. Well, what about you know Bowie had abrupt changes. You know there would be yeah. periods where there were a couple of albums would be maybe similar. Yeah, although actually, I mean the, the argument is musically, it was still there were still songs written on the acoustic guitar or written on the piano that had those chord structures. So even I suppose you know Diamond Dogs to uh, Young Americans is is the biggest change, and then from Young Americans to Station to Station and Low, I suppose. But other than that. It's not like this, where he put it on and what, what's he doing? What are they doing? <laughs> you didn't think that would be Bowie, really. No, no. Not really. I, Part of the thing with Bowie, really, is it still sounds like Bowie, doesn't it? I would say it's sort of like an artistic sensibility, mm. sort of um, always looking to do something in, but it does feel too light for that, in the sense that it's whimsical, you know. They're not yeah. They're not doing it for any artic- artistic purpose. They're doing it because they can, and they will. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking <laughs> I mean... The idea that Anthony Kiedis could rip off my bat. I mean, that's that's just laughable. It's the other way around. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know if it's the other way around. Well, I mean, Anthony Kiedis thinks that Mike Patton nicked his vocal style. Yeah, which is... I mean, that's a complete joke, isn't that's it? That's ridiculous, I mean, yeah. They're a bit... Yeah, you, you know, I think they're sort of demonstrating their musical prowess. They're a bit bigger than those bands who whose job is to go out and, sell, and make an album that sells. Mm. Their job is to go out and make an album that makes people go... Hmm? Yeah, <laughs> even their own fans. Yeah, which is great. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, iTunes. You put this into iTunes. Genre: indie rock. Shut up! <laughs> there it is. There it is. What are you talking about? The utter turds. <laughs> and yet, there would be a group of people who would say, "Ah, oh, this is indie," because I like indie. This is awful, you but saying, I like indie. You know. Are you saying Joe Wiley have been to that? No, that's exactly the point, isn't it? But the, the, in the, the, if they heard something crazy, oh, this is just like that band I like, that Joe Wiley, it's you know, tedious strumming Beatles S band. It's very, very powerful stuff. Mm. Indie club. Yeah. Wikipedia says it's experimental rock. Yeah, which is I mean, we call it prog. Experimental rock is what, what we do, really. That's what it is. Yeah. So yeah, this great band, not many people have heard of now. You know, um, only three albums, all different. They're all good. Yeah, we've made them famous now. Yeah, now everyone knows. If, how would you know without us? Our 200 views. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't feel equipped. You're probably right about the three eggs, and I hadn't thought of that. I hadn't thought about eggs at all. But I don't... I haven't, I haven't give, I've only given it one week, so it's very difficult. But yeah, OK, we'll go with, I'll go with three eggs as well. Yeah, because... Well, what, what uh, album should I buy? Mr Bungle. What should I buy next? Disco Volante. So, you know, there's only three. <laughs> so it's got to be the bottom one, hasn't it? So, mm. 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 so there you go. Uh, see you next week for an album.